We have some good news from South Carolina, where the state House of Representatives on Tuesday approved a bill that outlaws abortion, except in the cases of pregnancies resulting from rape or incest. The bill has now one more routine vote before heading to the state Senate. What will this mean if it passes in the Senate, and what are its chances there? Joining me now to discuss it is the representative who moved this bill through the House, South Carolina State Representative John McCravey. Representative McCravey, welcome to Washington Watch. Thank you so much, and I'm glad to be, be able to be on. We are glad to have you, and thank you for your leadership on this issue. Give us a little background on uh, where the bill came from and what's happened up to now. Well, of course, we, like many states, um, we, we scheduled a special session as soon as the Dobbs decision was finalized. Uh, we, we had a special ad hoc committee that I was the chair of. We've had four hearings. We took this bill. Uh, of course, we, we drafted the bill very carefully and we took it through the Judiciary Committee and uh, it made it through the House floor two days ago on second reading and yesterday on third reading. So we are excited about it. Uh, it's the most pro-life bill we've ever had in the state of South Carolina and advances the pro-life cause. It's a total ban. Uh, we did have uh, a vote. Uh, it was a close vote on no exceptions. We almost had it with no exceptions. Uh, but we lost that vote by four votes. So they put on uh, sexual assault exceptions, and that's the only exception on it uh, as it moves forward to the Senate. So, uh, you know, I'm a 100% I'm a pro-life person, and it would be fine with me if it had no exceptions. But it does certainly take care of the life and health of the mother. That's, that's uh, every pro-life bill does that, in my opinion. So uh, and, yeah. I've got and some big features. Yeah, with no exception, even with exceptions, it, of course, covers 99 percent of, of pregnancies and, and about those, because that is a very controversial part of these pro-life bills, even on the pro-life side. How is that determined or enforced? Can somebody just say they were sexually assaulted and therefore be an exception? Well, in our state, we had already passed the heartbeat bill. I sponsored that to begin with in 2019. And in that bill, exceptions were put on. But they must be reported by the doctor to the sheriff uh, if it's if there's a sexual uh, misconduct and the woman has to be advised that that will happen. And so uh, that takes care of a lot. You know, of course, we have the morning after pill, which is emergency contraception uh, that takes care of a lot of things. But the uh, as as an example, our, our heartbeat bill was in effect for seven and a half weeks before our Supreme Court enjoined it. Uh, a couple of weeks ago to determine whether or not it's constitutional and whether they wanted to look at a, a sentence in that bill. But nevertheless, during the time it was in force, uh, we, on, we had zero uh, uh, abortions for sexual conduct, so uh, criminal sexual conduct. So I, I think that shows the, the rarity yeah. of those exceptions. I think nationwide is 99.4%, so it will be less than 0.7% of, uh, of all abortions. That is a very high standard. Uh, those who might try to get the rape or incest exception would have to think uh, seriously about that because it has to be uh, reported. I'm sure that was uh, deliberated uh, carefully uh, in the House there. Now, I also understand this bill places expectations on biological fathers as well. Tell us a bit more about that. Well, there was an amendment added, and I did not oppose that amendment. And uh, it's what I call rollback child support. Uh, so, so in addition to your normal child support, if, if, uh, if, if a child is born and you're responsible and the paternity test shows that you are, are the responsible father, then, then uh, if, if you're not married, of course, but if you're estranged and, and there's, there's no support going on, you're going to be responsible for support retroactive to the date of conception. So I, I don't have any problem with that. Well, nor do I. This really does start uh, with men taking responsibility for uh, their decisions and the results of their decisions, and we hope that will encourage uh, many to do so. But uh, Representative McCravey, tell us a little bit about the opposition that you saw to this bill so far in the legislature there. 
Well, you know, we, we expected Democrat opposition. We only have one Democrat that voted for the bill. Um, and all the all the other Democrats voted against it. They are not pro life uh, to a person, and so uh, so that's that was that was expected. Uh, we did not know how many Republicans, however, would be op either opposed to the bill or opposed or uh, wanted exceptions on the bill. Uh, we found out that there were about twenty three Republicans out of eighty that uh, wanted exceptions on the bill. And with the, when they joined with the Democrats, uh, that was a coalition we could not stop. We were about four votes or well, eight votes short. Uh, if four people had changed their mind, we could have we could have passed it with no exceptions. So um, we've come a long way in South Carolina toward um, recognizing the rights of the pre-born. Yeah. Um, and I want to say one thing about this bill. There are several things in it that I think other states should look at. We heard from the medical community and we listed eight different conditions that we're gonna say are presumed if they're present that could threaten the life of the mother. We listed all these like ectopic pregnancy, molar pregnancy, miscarriage, uh, preeclampsia, uh, abrupt placentae, all these different uh, uh, uterine rupture, uh, on and on. And this is so there'll be a bright line for doctors to look at. You know, their biggest complaint is, well, we, we're not lawyers. We can't interpret this law. Well, that's something that really comes from the left. I think most doctors can interpret the law correctly, but we didn't want to leave anything for chance. And we wanted to take away all excuses. Uh, so the pro-life medical community, the pro-life OBGYNs had input into this bill. We had uh, pro-life uh, embryologists. We, we preserved IVF except for the uh, selective reduction, which is no longer even uh, even a, a normal practice anymore. So uh, I, think, I think we really dug into the details on this bill. We spent a lot of time listening and drafting and being very careful with our language so there could be no question uh, to the medical community. Representative John McCravey, we appreciate you doing that, the diligence that you have clearly given to this. We appreciate your time today, and uh, we will continue to uh, cheer for your efforts there in South Carolina. Thanks for joining us. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate it.